everybody, welcome back to the next part in my Creating a Great Tone series for the Line 6 Helix. I wanted to do this video today um, because I did a, a video, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks back that was talking about using a loudness meter um, to match levels uh, when comparing two audio files. Now, uh, the video got great response. Uh, I think it was an important video to make because a lot of folks when making presets and maybe adding EQ to uh, a, a patch don't realize that when they've maybe boost or cut a bunch of frequencies that the perceived volume level has changed uh, between their sort of pre and post processed tone, which makes it difficult to hear if the EQ or processing is actually making it better or worse in our opinion, right? Um, so by, by making sure that the levels are matched in perceived loudness, we're gonna be able to make a better decision. But I got a lot of folks send me messages and I saw a lot of comments on the video where a lot of folks thought that I was talking more about matching our volume levels when we're changing between presets or changing between snapshots. And that's not what that video was actually about. Um, so that is a question that I get a lot. So I remember that, that our first video was just more about when comparing two audio files to see if we prefer processing versus non-processed or if we like the processing we've put on it, we, or if we're just comparing two files to see which one we like better, we have to have the perceived loudness matched extremely close to make an informed decision. But let's talk today about a question that is out there a lot, which is exactly what I was mentioning before. How can we match our preset or snapshot volumes to be close to each other and perceive volume, close enough that when we perform, when we switch between them, we're not getting surprises where one is really loud, one is really soft, we can't hear ourselves here, and then we're too loud here, right? To get it in the ballpark. Now, the, the, the short answer to that is how I do it is I always just use my ear. Now, that would be a, a terrible video to just come out and say, well, just use your ear, everybody, because, I mean, well, duh, you know, some people probably try to and maybe still have a problem. They don't know exactly what they're listening for, or you know they don't know kind of the ins and outs of, of some of the differences between clean and overdriven sounds and whatnot. So, so that wouldn't be much help to just sell somebody use your ear, you know. Um, but that is how I do it and I've always been able to successfully do it that way. Now I'm sure a lot of others can as well. But if you can't, well, it would be nice if we could come up with some sort of a system that could potentially help us um, to at least get closer so that when we're in a live situation, all we may need are a few small tweaks uh, to get it right. Now, the other thing here too is, it is really gonna be down to personal preference and the situation we're in at the time. You know, some folks may want their clean sound to be much quieter because the song they're playing warrants that, right? It's just a subtle part underneath, right? So maybe we add a lot of reverb to that sound to kind of bring it back in the mix. Or maybe we just wanna turn down lower, right? And maybe we want our lead preset, let's say, to actually jump in volume because we want that to be louder and cut over the, you know, the rhythm guitars, let's say. So there is no right and wrong answer here. This video is gonna be more about trying to get all of our snapshots or presets at a perceived volume that's gonna be close to the same. So let's talk a little bit about how we can do that, okay? Um, so again, if you remember the, the first video that I did, about this, I had recommended, uh, I, I had used my, uh, my loudness meter that was built into Cubase, and a lot of folks will have a DAW that has a loudness meter built in, um, and you can obviously just use that. But for those who don't, and there was a lot of comments uh, for those that don't, I came up with one called Ulean, um, and it's a free uh, loudness meter that measures our, our uh, LUFS. Um, some folks had a hard time getting that to work in their DAWs, mainly Reaper. I had a bunch of folks say that they just couldn't get it to work properly in Reaper. Uh, but then, uh, let's go over to the screen here for a second. You're gonna see HX Edit up here. Um, there was this one too that I really want to thank a whole bunch of my viewers who left comments on, on Facebook and sent me messages and left it in the uh, com YouTube comments. It's great, I, I wasn't aware of this one, but this is a perfectly free standalone loudness meter called Orban Loudness Meter. And I'll try to remember to put the uh, link to it in the comments below. Uh, works great. I'm not gonna be using it for this video because the way I shoot the video, Cubase is using my Helix as an audio interface and it, for some reason, not let, it's not just not, not letting me use the uh, ASIO driver to run both at the same time. So I'll just use this meter over here that you see, which is going to give me the exact same readouts, I've already tested this, uh, as the Orban loudness meter. 
Uh, but if you do get the Urban Louse Meter, what you want to do first is go to your settings and assign your audio interface. So you'll see down here, I have it set to my Universal Audio Apollo Twin, uh, just so that it's not interfering with Cubase right now, but we would want to set that to ACO Helix. Uh, and then what will happen with that is uh, we'll get all of our integrated, here's our integrated one, that's the one I would use when trying to get the perceived loudness of, of a file working. Okay, so I can close that out. If anybody needs a free loudness meter, that seems like a great one. Standalone, don't need it in a DAW, works great, okay? So we'll get rid of that. Now here's my preset. I just called it a level balance. And again, this is not, I dialed this up in about 15 seconds or 20 seconds. This is not supposed to sound like anything really that, that's, that's you know good, bad or otherwise. I just brought up a Brit Plexi Norm, a 412 Greenback uh, with a 4038 pulled 12 inches back. Uh, twisted the knobs until things sounded good, but I created uh, four snapshots, clean, push, OD and lead. Just so we could demonstrate um, how we could balance it between these uh, different snapshots that have varying degrees of gain. And that's going to be really the important point of today's video is talking about how we can balance it to the different uh, gain levels. Because that, that's going to be really the thing I think that most people are going to tr find tricky is, is not so much balancing the level between you know, heavily distorted tones, which have a natural compression built in, but more balancing the levels between a clean sound and the heavily distorted sounds. Okay, so we'll try to talk a little bit about that. Uh, so really it's unimportant I ha uh, what I have in the chain here. I have uh, an LA Studio Comp like I always do. That's just my glue compression at the end. I put that at the end of everything as most people know who've watched my videos. Um, have uh, an EQ with just low and high cuts, 120 hertz low cut, high cut at eight kilohertz, a little bit of the split crossover uh, in there at 650 hertz, a little room verb, and the amp I just showed you. I have a compressor here that I'm just going to turn off for now um, in all of the snapshots. It was already off in three and four. So that's just, we'll ignore that for now. We'll talk about that shortly. And I have a looper set up to play a loop uh, because if anybody who watched the previous video on uh, using the uh, uh, loudness meter to, to get the perceived loudness close, um, one of the things that when we're doing this is we have to have the same performance going into uh, whatever two sounds we're comparing. Otherwise, if I'm hitting softer, I'm hitting louder, that's going to skew our, our, deci our, our decision making process. We're not going to be hearing the same thing through each of the, the, uh, the sounds that we're comparing, if that makes sense. I hope that's clear. So, so by, by just looping something, I just did some silly chords on here. It's going to be, again, annoying to hear this through the video and it's probably not even appropriate for some of the distorted sounds, but it's just to show that um, we're going to set the levels using the same audio file. It's very important. So we put a looper at the beginning, so it's going to feed the same thing through our chain so we can, we can make the right decisions, okay? So here's what that looper sounds like. I think I'm in loop mode down here. Um, some, you know, I apologize for the, the boring chords here. All right, so I had to go and uh, enable my uh, track monitoring in Cubase. So now you'll see the LUFS meter working here. So what you'll notice is as I play that through this clean patch, like you hear it, I'm getting an integrated loudness of about minus 24.6, okay? So let's remember that. I'm just going to make a little note of that so as we go through the video I remember where we're at. So minus 24.6 for the clean sound. Now what's interesting is I did a little experiment here and you know so many folks ask me where do you dial, what, what level do you dial your presets in at? And a lot of times I'll just use something like my power cab and I want to get the, the best signal I can going into that. Um, so if I'm hooked up with, you know, line six link cable going digitally into my power cab, I want that yellow light to be on, but not going into the red at all. So I found that for this preset here, if I was doing that, my integrated LUFS was around minus 24.6 and I was getting the signal I needed in my power cab. Now, the funny thing about that is if I go into Cubase, that's actually giving me a lower level than I would want to record onto. So it really depends on and I'm going into Cubase just via USB. It really depends on what your purpose is here. So I don't want to give anybody a particular reading here that says, oh, you're always going to use this. Although I do find that around this minus 24.6 sends it uh, to the power cab uh, quite nicely and gives me the level that I need there. Okay, so it's a little side point. Okay, so as we switch through the, the um, snapshots here, one thing I did, if you notice, 
I bumped the gain, uh, the drive up. Uh, I bumped the master up, I believe, too there. Oh no, the master stayed the same. So on the push, I just bumped the gain up from one and a half to three and a half. Okay. Um, on the overdrive, the master went from eight to nine and the drive went way up to nine. And then on the lead, I just opened the whole thing up. Everything was on 10. So those are the changes you're hearing. Now, one thing you'll notice I did not do yet, and I already experimented with this a bit before just to be prepared for the video, but you'll notice I left the channel volume exactly the same. So what's gonna obviously happen is we're gonna have a huge jump in uh, the levels here as we push our gain and master up, okay? And I, I, if I do this, it may even clip, but let's just listen to our loop and I'll go through those and you'll hear. So watch your speakers here. Okay, so we see a, a almost 10 dB jump in perceived loudness. Now our perceived loudness here has changed for some reason. Let me just check. Okay, so it seems our, our integrated loudness on, on our snapshot one for whatever reason it is now is around 25. So I'll just make a note of that. But if you notice it jumped up to in and around minus 15 as I started moving up to our push and lead snapshot. So obviously way out of whack. So what we have to do then is go through and figure out for the other snapshots how we can adjust our channel volume, which isn't going to change the tonality or, or, uh, or the sound of our preset, but just bring the volume down. So that the same amount of signal is also hitting our compressor at the end here. Um, this compressor is not really there to control or match volumes or, or control now. It's more just a glue compression. Uh, the LA Studio comes a slower compressor. It doesn't have a really super fast attack, so it's not going to grab the transients uh, the same way as, let's say, a deluxe compressor, which we'll talk about shortly with a faster attack setting. So it's, don't think of it as something that's trying to control peaks. It's just a glue that I'm using there, okay? So here's what I found before to get sort of in the ballpark of the perceived loudness we need. On the push, um, I needed to come down to about 5.2, okay? So let's listen to this loop again on the perceived loudness here on uh, Snapshot 1. So we see it's, it's right around 25. Let's go to Snapshot 2. So still a little bit louder, right? So let's do this. Let's, let's maybe bump that back a couple notches. We'll listen again. So it seems somewhere between getting it down to 4.9 or 5 gets us closer to the same perceived loudness as the clean. Okay, let's go to our overdrive channel. Now I'm going to bring this one down <clears throat> somewhere around 4.7-ish and we'll see what happens now. Now again, these chords are going to start sounding distorted and not really appropriate, but it's just to get this perceived loudness. So we see that that is reading on our meters quite nicely. It's working. Um, let's go to our uh, lead snapshot. And again, I'll probably bring that right down around the same and see what happens. Because as these, just, these five, the, um, the sound and the presets get more distorted, there's more natural compression built in. So we're not going to, to need to cut it back quite as much. If you notice going from clean to push, we had to go from seven to five or to 4.8 or 4.9. And now we're only going down slightly more, even though we're, we're pushing the drive and the master up, we're getting more saturation, but not necessarily a ton more volume. Okay. And that's what happens with these distorted patches and why they're easier to kind of level match. Right? So let's take a listen to what this uh, perceived loudness is on the lead um, at 
uh, channel volume of 4.7 with everything else maxed out. So very, very subtle change from 4.7 to 4.8. 4.8 put it a little too high and 4.7 a little too low, but we're, we're well within sort of this half dB margin that, that we need for things to be perceived the same. Okay, so now if we say that there, we've, we've done it. We've, we've matched the levels now and everything's gonna be perfect, off I go. Now, mind you, there is some truth to the fact that they are going to be matched much better uh, this way than if we just didn't bother doing any matching at all. But does the perceived loudness meter give us all the information we need to match these in a way that's going to work? Well, let me play this for you now. And I'm going to switch between the snapshots. I'm not too concerned about LUFS meter anymore. I just want to now let's use our ear and let's listen to what the sound is like. And if we find that the difference between the clean to push to overdrive to lead is actually where we want it to be. Okay, let's listen and we'll, we'll see how it works out. So here's the clean. Watch up here as I switch through the snapshots, you'll see them and really listen. I hope everybody's listening on a decent set of speakers or headphones, just so you can really hear the subtle differences that might, might be there, okay? So we'll take a listen and you tell me, or we'll see what our thoughts are after the fact. And, and again, this is gonna come down to personal preference. You know, a lot of folks may find, no, I want my cleans a little louder or no, I want my cleans a little quieter. And it's really gonna come down to personal preference and a lot of this, but this is just to get us, you know, close in the ballpark. Okay, so let's listen. Here we go. And watch up here as I switch to them. What are your impressions? Mine were that between the overdrive and the lead, there was almost no perceivable difference. Uh, maybe we would want to raise it more for our lead because we want it to poke out a little bit more. But for now, we're just trying to get them the same. And it was strange, the clean, although having, you know, right in the ballpark of the same perceived loudness, there was still something funny going on there in that I have a feeling that if you were playing your clean at that level and then you jump to your lead, you'd feel in, the, in a mix, with the band, you'd probably feel like that lead fell back in the mix and you're not hearing it, even though the perceived loudness is the same. Here's one of the reasons I feel that is. When we have clean sounds on the guitar, we have a lot of transient peaks or transient spikes, let's call them, meaning that there isn't this natural compression that's kind of holding the sound together or gluing it together. So when we hit the strings, those sounds at the beginning tend to pop out and we get all these kind of like peaky little things happening in the audio. So we may have this averaged out perceived loudness is the same, but now the, the peaks are kind of sticking out, which feels like, you know, we may have to turn that down a bit, okay? So if you listen again, if I go from clean to overdrive, listen for that, how you sort of hear these things peaking, but then everything kind of gets glued together in, in the lead and overdrive sounds. Take a listen again. So the integrated loudness meter, the perceived loudness meter does not necessarily give us the whole picture. So how can we fix this? Well, one way we can do it is on our cleaner um, sounds, we could use a compressor. Now, a compressor can be used in a bunch of ways. I use this uh, LA Studio Comp at the end of a chain as sort of a glue, 
it's an effect compressor. It's not really there to control peaks or control anything about the level. It's just more to glue all the sounds together. And I, I've had so many people say, I can't believe you put a compressor after delays and reverbs. And yes, I know that's normally frowned upon. Uh, if you're using a very heavy squash compressor with a super low threshold, you know, maybe a fast attack, yes, I probably wouldn't put it. And if it was a big reverb, yeah, it's going to play around with that. But this is, I'm actually doing as a glue to take my delays, reverbs, everything I'm doing and just glue it together. So that's an effect style compressor, I would call it, that, you know, in my opinion. But let's go over here to the deluxe comp. I'm going to turn that on on my first two snapshots and leave it off on my next two since they already, the overdrive channels or the overdrive snapshots are already going to have a certain natural compression to it. But how am I going to set this? Well, let's bring this up so that the threshold is at zero. So it shouldn't be affecting unless our guitar signal is surpassing that, which it should not be doing. Um, and a ratio of two to one. Okay, we could also set that at three to one or four to one if you wanted to. Um, I did a compressor video a long time ago. You can go listen to that to find out what all of these do. But I'm going to set it just at two to one for now because I want this to kind of be as transparent as possible. All I'm trying to do is control the peaks. Okay, I'm not really trying to make the tone different. If that makes sense. I'm not a like deep compression like for funk or something where we, we want, wanted really digging in and, and clamping down, right? Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to set the attack very fast to one millisecond. You could even maybe go faster to 0.1 milliseconds. We'll go one millisecond. And I'm saying the release as fast as I can so it just kind of lets go after, okay? Now I added a little tiny bit of makeup gain here um, on on snapshots one and two. This the, the tests that I was doing before. So let's do this right now. Let's get rid of that just so you can hear what's actually going on. So those are set there to, to basically right now, if I play the, um, the loop and turn the compressor on and off, we shouldn't really hear much of a difference, okay? I'll, I'll do that right now. Watch when I turn it on and off and let's see if we can hear anything. So nothing there as, as it should be. So what I want to do now is I want to start rolling back my threshold. This is, this is a topic that will get a lot of people because a lot of people will comment that they want to have gain reduction meters on the uh, deluxe comp or on our compressors. And I agree. I, I really hope that that's something that can be implemented in the future. I have no idea how difficult that is or how easy it is, but I would love to see the gain reduction meter because it would make it so much easier. We could just go in and we could just pull that threshold back until we see that it's just grabbing the peaks and not really affecting anything else. And that way it'll just smooth out that sound without adding a, a different tonal quality, let's call it, okay? But for now, we'll try to do it by ear. Well, I'm gonna play this again with it on and I'm gonna roll it back until we hear it do something, okay? So let's see what happens. So now we see I checked the perceived loudness, I brought my threshold back to minus 27, I actually brought the ratio up to 4 to 1 and I added 1 dB of makeup gain. Could you hear that? It just kind of smoothed that tone out a little bit, okay? So let's do that on our push as well, okay? We'll, uh, we'll turn that on and we'll see if that same thing works here and how, how much we have to bump it up to get our perceived loudness up.
So now do you notice if I go from my clean to my lead, where the clean sort of seemed a little out of control and, and, and poking out, you know, with these little transient spikes, which kind of gave the impression that my lead was going to kind of fall back a bit. Now I think what you'll find is the lead will sound like it's going to jump up more because the compressor is controlling our clean sound just a little bit. Okay, so let's listen to that. What do you think? Do you see how they seem a little more balanced? And it had nothing to do with, as, or sorry, had not as much to do with perceived loudness because in both situations, before I put the compressor and after, they both had perceived loudnesses very, very close to one another. But the clean was still sounding just something like it was out of control a little bit, I guess, is a way we could describe it. As soon as I put the compressor on, the perceived loudness by putting a little bit of makeup gain in there after the compressor is kind of, it shows that we're probably doing with that threshold level, uh, I lost about a dB, so I'm doing about a dB of gain reduction probably on those peaks um, and, and possibly right into the body of it as well. So what it allowed us to do now is to have that perceived loudness sound more like it was matched up. Now again, this is gonna be personal preference. Do you want your clean louder than that? Well, good, so then, you know, go into your channel volume and bump it up a little bit more again. So we seem to have our compressor set where it is now. Now let's listen through all four of these snapshots and see if we're happy with where they're sitting with our ears. Forget the loudness meter now, we've done that. We know they're in the ballpark. Now we gotta get them to where we want them for our particular scenario or for our ideals and what we wanna hear, okay? So here we go, let's listen and watch up on the screen as I change through these. I think they're, they're well within the ballpark of, of a good starting point anyways. Now, does that mean when we get to a performance that that's just gonna be done and we don't have to touch it? No, but the, 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 the changes we, we have to make will be much less at this point. You might get through the first tune and say, yeah, you know what, I just want those cleans a little louder. You know, maybe you go into your, your makeup game on your compressor and bump it up half a dB or a dB. Maybe you go into your channel volume and knock it up a couple notches, right? Or, you know, I really want my, my lead to pop out a little bit more. Fine, go add a dB or two to your lead preset. That's going to be down to personal preference. But, so is it possible to use a loudness meter to set or match levels between presets and snapshots? I think it is, but with a little asterisk beside it, right? It's gonna get us in the ballpark. It's gonna give us a good reference where if we decide that, hey, we're playing into a power cab and an integrated loudness of minus 25 when I'm hooked in through um, you know, my, my Line 6 Link uh, digital connection, that gets me the level I need. Well, that's great to know because every preset we make, we can just put it minus 25 and it should hit the power cab the same way, right? So that we're gonna get the signal that we need in there. Um, so it's good for that, but then we have to keep in mind the difference. If we're just balancing a whole bunch of distorted sounds, I'm gonna say that you could probably get away with using the, the loudness meter to just match them all to wherever you want, close to the same, uh, within you know half a dB of each other, and you're probably gonna be all right. They're gonna sound the same, but it's when we start mixing cleans versus overdrives, where we have sort of a natural compression in the overdriven sounds, but kind of transient peaks and spikes in the clean sounds, that's when we can bring something like the, um, the uh, deluxe compressor in with a very low attack and release and just bring the threshold back so it's catching those peaks. Or to however we maybe it, we, we go a little bit deeper on because that's the way we like the sound of it, right? So that's gonna be a good use of compression for that. So does that help anybody? I hope so. I'm gonna try to remember to put, uh, somebody had to remind me the last time, I appreciate it too, to put the link to the loudness meters, the U-Lean and the Orban ones because uh, they're nice free loudness meters and they're, they're, for those who don't have a DAW um, with them in it already, um, they are great tools to have and 
it's a good tool to have in our toolkit if we are having trouble getting in that ballpark or knowing where we should set sort of the loudness level on our presets. I hope that helps some folks on a topic that I've, I've heard a lot of, of, of chatter about and I've had a lot of questions personally. So I thought probably about time we do a video on it and just sort of talk about some of the ways I look at it. But you know, uh, may not work for everybody and that's fine too, you know, but I hope it does help a few folks to kind of uh, give them at least a method to get where they want to uh, go in, in, uh, in quicker fashion. All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please share the video with anybody you think would benefit from it, like it, uh, I really appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I also appreciate that very much and, and thank you guys so much for all the support and uh, I'll be back soon with some more content. Thanks for tuning in, ciao for now.